Joining us now is going to be Dr. Russ Galise from the University of Miami, and we're going to talk a little bit about how they won the award. Welcome. Hi, right, thanks. Glad to be here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your program and uh, what you did to qualify and win that award? Well, um, I work at the University of Miami, Miller School of Medicine. Um, we have a slightly different structure there in terms of simulation-based education. Um, I work primarily at the Gordon Center for Research in Medical Education, um, but we're not the only place where simulation occurs, um, even on the medical school campus as well as university-wide. Um, so we have collaborative programs across all our campuses with the Center for Patient Safety, um, as well as the School of Nursing has their own simulation program. But we're kind of the de facto leaders uh, for simulation at our institution. The Gordon Center itself, um, although it wasn't called that originally, is probably the first simulation center in the world. Um, it was started in the 1970s by Dr. Michael Gordon. Um, at that time it was called the Medical Training and Simulation Lab, um, but it was really one of the first places uh, to be doing simulation anywhere for health professions education. So it's great to see that evolution over time, isn't it? Yeah. And sounds like something to be proud of. You talk about the, the different centers. Do you also collaborate together and do interprofessional yeah. team-based work? Exactly, yes. So um, we have several different programs that involve uh, students from the medical school, from the nursing school. There's a nearby physician assistant program, and we also have pre-hospital. So uh, EMS and uh, paramedic students also participate in some of our programs. See, that's fantastic, that whole transfer of care opportunity, that whole team-based care in emergency medicine certainly is a, a, an outstanding opportunity. Uh, as you think about where you were and where you're going, wh what do you see next for your center? Well, um, I know that uh, kind of generally speaking, I think an area that simulation is going is uh, simulation-based assessment. I think a lot of the focus up till now has been on simulation-based training. Um, but I, I think uh, several of the subspecialties and so forth are moving to do simulation-based assessment, especially the procedural specialties where up till now we've been doing written exams and oral exams and it doesn't quite make sense for performance-based assessment. Um, and we are kind of taking the lead in that. One of the criteria I think that uh, was particularly strong in our application for the Aspire Award was our collaboration um, with the Royal College in Canada where they've been using um, uh, computerized mannequin simulators in their internal medicine board exam for about a decade now. Right. I think it's exciting to move towards that type of assessment and, and to, to meld training and assessment within the sure. simulation environment really makes sure. sense, doesn't it? Sure. And you know, that's talking more about high stakes kind of summative assessment. Of course, the real strength in simulation is performative assessment. And because debriefing is part and parcel of a good simulation education, there you're kind of building in the learning that happens from. So it's assessment for learning instead of assessment of learning. Well, if you think about where that formative assessment used to occur, uh, as opposed to where it will right. and should occur, it's a really big, it's a revolutionary change. Sure. And obviously patient safety has been a big driver behind the worldwide increased use in simulation. Um, and so I, I think it's appropriate, ethical, learner-centered, uh, it's, it's all the right things, I think. Well, it's nice that we, all the things we hear at conferences like this actually being put into practice. Well, we try, and uh, it doesn't happen automatically. Um, that's kind of one of the things we had to demonstrate uh, in winning the award was that we have a very systematic process for designing all of our, our courses that are simulation based, how, having that integrated into the larger curriculum, all toward meeting kind of the global objectives of the institution, uh, which include you know, safe, uh, competent care. So, so as a pioneering center, we'll, we'll call it that, uh, what advice do you have for other centers that are building up their programs? Well, um, number one, you know, start small. Um, don't uh, go for pie in the sky right off the bat. I think sometimes it can be intimidating to go to an already established center uh, that's been around. You know, ours has been around for almost 50 years. Um, and we have a lot of visitors that come to tour our center. Um, but I always say, you know, a lot of great simulation happens in a one-room kind of skills lab. And to 
do what's feasible, um, but that can be of high quality in your program, and then you build it over time. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, scalability and time. I, I think th those are great messages. So when you go back uh, to Miami and, and leave this wonderful country, uh, what do you think the team and, and the folks behind the center will say when they see that award? Well, I know that everyone is uh, very proud of it. Um, you know, we, when we received uh, the award letter, uh, the center director, you know, distributed that to, to the whole staff because it's really a, a shared award. Um, and it's particularly uh, meaningful to us now. Um, Dr. Gordon actually just passed away last month oh. at age 80. Um, so a huge loss to us personally, um, but also to the medical education and simulation communities. Um, so really this is, I think, a fitting tribute uh, to his legacy. It certainly is. And uh, any parting words for our simulation uh, fans out there? Well, um, keep doing good work. Uh, our mission statement is saving lives through simulation technology. Um, and I think that's one that we all kind of share. Um, so keep doing the good work. I'm going to say you're not only saving, you're improving lives through simulation care. I hope so. Well, thanks. Thank Congratulations you. again.